Carbon dioxide emissions are one of the main causes of climate change, and researchers are trying to find ways to remove it from the atmosphere. That includes researchers from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Pamela Chu is a group leader in the Materials Measurement Laboratory at NIST. Pam, welcome to the program. Thank you. So first, explain this idea of direct air capture. How does it work? So direct air capture is a technology that we're working on to remove carbon dioxide or greenhouse gas emissions um, from the atmosphere. One of the main challenges is that um, with um, human activity, a lot of these greenhouse gases and CO2 emissions have actually collected up in the atmosphere. Um, that's one of the major drivers for climate change that we're experiencing now. And what we really would like to do is remove those emissions and direct air capture is a way of doing it. Um, think of it of like being a plant. Um, we want to take the CO2 out, much like the plants do, and then we want to permanently store that CO2 someplace so that it no longer impacts our atmosphere. But how do you actually grab it out of the air? Like, what do you use to take it out of the air? So there are different um, solutions and materials that are, have been proven to take the CO2 out of the air. Uh, but one of the things that we're looking at is to develop better materials that do that process more efficiently and more effectively so it takes less energy and less um, and it'll cost less ultimately to do this process. And obviously there would be a big benefit of taking that out of the air. It would uh, alleviate some of the effects of, of climate change. What potential impact does this have if you're able to scale it? So yes, um, hopefully we can scale it. One of the the benefits is really to mitigate the climate change that we're seeing now because we have a lot of CO2 up in the atmosphere and that's what's impacting our climate today. Uh, as we go forward, we really need to mitigate these emissions. And so uh, as we can scale it up, we can hopefully bring our, our, our environment back to uh, before our emissions had such bad effect. And what role does NIST play in all this? Why, why is the federal government uh, involved in this? So NIST is really a, um, has a very specific niche of developing measurement science. Uh, so a lot of the measurement science that we develop um, pushes measurements forward uh, one step, two steps at a time uh, in order to improve our understanding of how things work. Uh, and it helps um, spur on innovation and new technologies. An example is uh, our push um, to develop better frequency and, and time measurements have really developed the um, global positioning system that we know today. So in the similar fashion, we are doing this for direct air capture. We're applying it to materials to understand how they might absorb CO2 and release that CO2 so that we can permanently store it. And so that hopefully we can spur on a new industry to effectively uh, capture the carbon dioxide. So Pam, what's the biggest challenge in actually getting this to work? Uh, the biggest challenge really is to scale it up to a level that's effective um, and have impact. Um, one of the challenges right now is there are prototype systems that are out there, but they're really only working at a level that's, um, we really need to improve it by six orders of magnitude. So is this really going to work? Are you optimistic that you can make this work that it can actually have an impact and that you're not actually increasing carbon emissions in trying to get it to work. So I'm an optimist. I'm hopeful that we can make it work. Um, it will take some research and development to really push this uh, technology forward. But examples of where we are today that we didn't anticipate being is where we are with solar energy and wind energy. You know, um, those are now uh, economically viable. Um, in the 70s, they weren't. So, you know, with time and with research, I think we can actually get to a point um, where this will be effective. We have a lot of bright people working on it, and it's a, really, it's an all-hands uh, effort right now to with, between industry and the government to try and make this work. Tell me a little bit more about that and how you're working with industry and what their role is and, and what your specific role is. So, again, our specific role at NIST is to develop benchmark uh, measurement science and benchmark materials to help people compare what they are um, achieving in the research and development. So essentially what we, we do is provide a ruler for this system and so we can measure the success of new materials and new discoveries that other people are creating. Um, and then industry, how we work with industry is really we 
We work with convening uh, stakeholders from industry and across government uh, to understand what the problems might be and how our measurements and standards that we develop can actually help the adoption of these um, new capabilities. Uh, for example, in the cement area and concrete, those are one of the biggest uh, emitters, uh, CO2 emitters, um, a major emitter of CO2. Um, and so what we're looking at is convening a consortium with industry and um, government to identify um, the challenges and the measurement challenges that are needed. You know, what we want to understand is the whole carbon footprint of this um, industry and then be able to address it um, to reduce that carbon footprint. Are you also collaborating with other agencies within the federal government? Uh, yes, we, we are looking to do that, you know, with our work um, in this consortium, we have a number of uh, other agencies that are uh, working with us. We also work with, um, attend a lot of the different agency um, uh, meetings to discuss our progress and, and understand what they, is needed from their perspective. Is this something that's going to require uh, more than just NIST, is this a whole of government kind of this, approach? This is, this is absolutely a whole of government approach because there are all sorts of a things that are needed to actually make this happen. We have to work on the science, we have to work on scaling it up and the engineering and the prototypes, and then we also have to work from the policy end um, to, to help um, spur that industry along. Well, it's a big problem, but I'm glad that you're on it. Thank you so much, Pam, for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.